Become of is, or became or become of is something to grow into. All right, so we got those. All right, let's get into the Bible study. And as we read the verses, we might be able to hear the spiritual teaching and the biblical teaching behind this. Let's go. Father God, Father God, Father God, thank you, Jesus. Amen. When the people became murmurers, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. Therefore his wrath was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed the utmost part of the host. Now, in this Bible verse, let's apply the definitions to it. When the people gave in to the murmuring spirits, it displeased the Lord because they allowed the murmuring spirits to make refuge in their uh, bodies or their houses, right? The Lord heard it and therefore his wrath was kindled. How dare you give in to these evil spirits? Have I not elevated and protected you enough? You had a way to get out of it, to send it away, but you chose to abide in it instead of abiding in me. Therefore, the all-consuming fire of the Lord came among them and consumed their spirit. Now, the last time we read about God going into the nostrils of an individual, taking away his their breath, which he had given them, so it wasn't really their breath to be theirs. It was God's breath in their earthly vessels that they weren't taking care of, was with the two sons of the high priest Aaron, right? His two sons decided to offer God strange fire. And in offering God strange fire, God sent his beautiful holy fire into their nostrils and it consumed them from the inside out. I'm looking over my notes. And that happened during uh, the book of Exodus. Yes, Exodus. I want to say it was about the chapter 30 in the book of Exodus, but don't quote me there. It's around those. I know I've shared it before, but it's around that area, right? So two of his sons were consumed. The same thing happened here. God sent his beautiful, all-consuming fire into the nostrils of those who were murmuring, gave in to these evil, disgusting, murmuring spirits, and his holy, beautiful fire consumed their spirit. He took back what was his. Ain't nothing ours, because we're not creators, we're not gods, there's only one God, and that is Yahweh in Jesus' name. Now, reading the Bible verse with these different definitions, this makes sense, right? When the people of God who God set free with the outstretched righteous hand, protective and glorious loving arm, became, chose to enter into a parental state of will, full complaint and resentment day and night against God, murmurers, especially the men, because it is a masculine word, which is transferred to the women, spoke hatred against God. It displeased the Lord and he heard it. Therefore his wrath was kindled and the fire of the Lord burnt amongst them and consumed the utmost part of the host. God sent his righteous wrath to their very spirit within them at the nation of Israel and allowed to take over their body. Murmurers equal evil spirit. Now that we have more of an understanding, we might understand better the grave insult this generation, this generation in the book of Numbers right here, I'm not talking about anyone present, I'm saying this one, this generation of the nation of Israel committed against God. It wasn't simply children whining and complaining. There was hatred and evil spirit behind their talks. Therefore his wrath was kindled and the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Many might know this as a fear of the Lord experience. What is a fear of the Lord experience? Well, I'm glad you asked. In the video to the link that you see on your screen now, I describe my fear of the Lord experience, which I described in this video at the time I didn't know because I had been taught incorrectly 
I didn't know it was a fear of the Lord experience. I just remember being terrified by this beautiful, brighter than bright light. I just remember that, right? And fighting. So you're more than welcome to check it out. It's kind of funny. It's during season one, I believe. So the audio and visual isn't as good, but I did my best. All right, let's continue. Chapter 11, verse two through three. Then the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was clinched, and he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Now, did everyone hear that? That God allowed his holy, beautiful fire to continue until Moses prayed? So, it doesn't say in the biblical text whether it lasted for five minutes, ten minutes, or for an hour or two days it doesn't say that all it says is it was a period of time I believe it was a period of time to be witnessed by the nation of Israel three to four million people because God was doing his best to make a terrifying judgment experience an educational one let me get some water for the nation of Egypt Mm -mm -mm. Praise Yahweh now and forever. Amen in Jesus' name. So I believe this is why God allowed it to go out for a while because, <coughs> like we said in the Bible verse, right? God will not let them be tempted beyond what they can endure, but he will always make a way out for them, right? So he sent even his own wrath and his own righteous judgment among them. The minute <coughs> they cried unto his prophet and his prophet cried unto the Lord, that's when God stopped and took the fire and stopped it. Does that make sense? <coughs> Sorry, let me call. So there is an order and a process to God. And a lot of Christians... By I mean a lot. I really don't think it's that many. Now that I I met a more variety of Christians, I believe it's only the double-minded, the compromisers, those who want to be gray zone and live wickedly, who think that God will allow them to live a sinful life and still let them in heaven. And there won't be any justice or ju judgment for them. I pray that wasn't, I pray this isn't the case, but y'all, y'all see what's going on TV these days, right? All right. All right. So we went over the strong concordance. We went over the spirit and the definitions. We went over this. All right. So Numbers chapter four, verse, Numbers chapter 11, verse four through nine. And the number of the people that was among them fell fell a lusting so fell a lusting so remember lusting is craving and this is an evil spirit so the number of people among them not all of them just a the number of people gave into the spirit of craving and lusting and turned away not towards god turned away from god and the children of israel also wept and said who shall give us flesh to eat now keep in mind, they had firstborn fatty calves, they had bullocks, they had daily offerings going on, uplifting offerings, free will offerings, elevation offerings, Nazarite offerings, they had offerings going on. And on top of that, they were still wealthy at this point in the nation of Israel while they are wandering the desert. It's only two years in. They have an abundance, right? So... There is no reason they should be complaining about everything. They should be thanking God. But no. They gave in to lusting or craving demonic spirits. We remember the fish which we ate in Egypt for naught. And the cucumbers and the peprons and the leeks and the onions and the garlics. But now our soul is dry away. Really dried away? Didn't Moses, by the order of God, just give you a spring with a well of water by hitting on a rock? 
and it, the water was sweet, seriously, but you're dried away. Do you hear the bitterness and complaining in y'all? When I was praying to God, I was like, God, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like how they're treating you, my father. Like God needs my defense, right? Anyway, we can see nothing but this man, and by man they mean manna, the bread of the angels, right? The manna was also as corridor seed, his color. What? Why is this word his here? Why is the manna being presented as a person? Remember, this is the bread of the angels. This is spiritual angel, spiritual food, because spirits are angels are spirit, right? God is the great spirit. So his spirit, God is put his spirit into this bread and made it produce naturally, uh, supernaturally, excuse me, every day where the nation of Israel can go out there and freely pick it and they are eating what? The body of Christ. Hallelujah. Y'all, I did not know that until I knew it, until God showed me, right? It's just like when we take communion, we are eating the body of Christ and drinking his blood. Same thing here. They aren't drinking the blood, right? But they are eating the body of Christ and they are rejecting the Holy Spirit, which is the, the gravest sin. It's the unforgivable sin in the Bible. Some people think you could just sin and sin and sin and God will forgive you. Nope. The unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And this is what they're committing right here because God put his spirit in the manna to sustain them and nurture them spiritually and they are rejecting God Almighty. Does that make more sense? All right. They're saying it's manna, but they're really rejecting God. The people went about and gathered it and the ground on the ground it in mills and beat it into motors and baked it into color door the color door is we're gonna go over a picture of it but it's not the witchy witchy color door okay think of it as a cast iron cast iron grill cast iron pot all right made cakes of it and taste it and and the taste of it was like the taste of fresh oil and when the dew fell down upon the host, meaning spirit, right? Upon the spirit in the night, the men fell with it. So when the dew, meaning the beautiful droplets of blessing waters, anointment, uh, pouring out from the windows of heaven fell upon the earth at night. Jesus prayed at night, took special time with God. We do our nightly Bible studies. Hallelujah. It's all coming together. The manna fell with it to provide for the nation of Israel spiritually. spiritually. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen and amen. So the nation of Israel isn't rejecting bread. They're rejecting the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Marie, but the Holy Spirit didn't come to the book of Acts. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit has always existed because Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have existed since there was a beginning to be a beginning of the beginning in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. His color, like the color of Delhi, Delhi, um, right? Why the use of the word his normally reserved for a man or a male? In this case, it's for a man, right? Because male is reserved for animals like a dog or a donkey <laughs> or a big bear. I love bears. Maybe because this is the spiritual or heavenly food, the bread of the angel. I believe part of God's offense is the people of Israel rejected being fed heavenly and spiritual elevating anything, including the bread of the angels. What we eat has a huge impact of our spiritual and earthly mind. I don't think the nation of Israel caught this. God was given his people the best of the best. And just for reference, and no, I'm not a dietitian or healthcare provider, so, but just understand, there's a reason why the evil ones want 
please don't think I'm a body shamer. I'm not a body shamer. I used to be almost 300 pounds. So I know what it takes to lose and gain weight, okay? So I'm not shaming anybody. But the world wants God's people eating filth. The world wants God's people eating fast food. The world wants God's people drinking chemicals and poisons and pharmacia and everything else like that. It pollutes our temples that the Most High gave us. I urge the body of Christ, return to what God originally intended for us to eat. Okay, and that's in the book of Ex uh, Genesis. He intended us to eat fruits, vegetables, herbs, not funny, smoky, smoky, or anything mind altering that is from the devil. If you read the book of Enoch, the fallen angels taught men to eat the hallucinogens and, and create all those potions. That is witchcraft. I don't care if evil ones pass a law saying it's okay to smoky, smoky, toky, toky. It is against God to go to anything else but him for comfort or rest in Jesus name. So God said to eat meat, right? And then God later expands that during this time in the book of the Bible where he says you can eat meat, but only clean meat. And then in the book of, I believe it's Acts, but later when um, God is giving Paul a vision, right? He said, don't say anything I made is unclean. And he's also talking about those who aren't uh, blood-born Jews or, or Hebrews. I get that. The point is this, we need to return back to eating and consuming into our temples of the Most High God what God originally intended. Does it mean you can't have cake? No, but why not make the cake instead of going to buy a box of whatever greatly chemically processed cake? Why not? home cook our baby food there's tons of books out there it's not hard to steam your vegetables put them in a blender mash them up and feed them to our babies do you see what i mean by the way a lot of those baby foods have um heavy metals in it which is causing alzheimer's and heavy metal poisoning and now you got the vic saying with the insane and the shot a you know people sticking like metal i'm just saying god's trying to mix uh, not God, the devil's trying to mix the clay with the metal, like on that statue in the dream, and God is saying no. So, in Jesus' name, let's go back to God. All right. Whew. Eternal foods. Eternal foods of heaven along with his beautiful love and glorious presence. God was elevating the nation. I see so many typos. I apologize. Was God, God was elevating the nation of Israel inside with food and spirit and outside with his presence and laws. But slave-minded nation of Israel could not get past their own past. Holding on to one's past is not appreciating that God has carried us through a desert into victory and made a way for us to endure and can cost one's future. Let this not be us. Amen and amen. Now, what does delady, delanium, I'm probably saying it wrong, I apologize, look like? I didn't know either, but it's like a waxy and a gummy I would like to see it just to see. I would love to see manna. I'm praying that one day God lets manna fall in my yard and so I can go pick it up and show you all. I am praying, or maybe you guys could pray too and God will let it happen for you guys and you guys could show me. But I believe in miracles and this is a miracle season. So why not, you know? I want to know what the bread of the angels tastes like. But this is a picture of it. So I imagine it looks something like this, which, I mean, it doesn't look terrible and it's supposed to taste good. So what's the big deal? Why are they complaining? I'm wondering, right? So what is a colador? A gray, a colador, excuse my accent. So this is a snapshot of colador from the Bible times. There's one of brass. There are some that were cast iron. 
there are these that were uh, some kind of ancient metal and the one uh, in the second row yeah second row second to the right I think I'm saying that right that one was is a Middle Eastern one so I would imagine the second row most of those was something like what had been going on during biblical times but who knows always confirm with God all right so chapter 11 verse 10 all right through 15 then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families every man in the door of his tent and we went over what the murmuring right it's a masculine term so the murmuring began with the men. I'm sorry, men. I promise you I'm not a man hater. Don't be mad at me. I promise you. And women, don't be angry feminists. All right? All right. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the wrath of the Lord was grievously kindled. Oh. Also Moses was grieved. And Moses said unto the Lord, oh, poor man. Poor Moses, it's so sad. Wherefore hast thou vexed me with thy servant? Remember, vex means why have you cursed me? Why am I being plagued with these people? Why have you um, overwhelmed me? Why am I being burdened with them, God? Like, what did I do to deserve this? This is what Moses is asking. And why have I not been found in favor of your sight? Has anyone ever asked God, like, God, why is this happening? Did I do something wrong? I do that all the time. Every time something happens, I'm like, God, what's going on here? <laughs> um, yes. So, Moses, Moses, Moses. Wherefore hast thou vexed thy servant? And why have I not found favor in thy sight? Seeing thou hast put the charge of this people upon me. I have, have I conceived this people? No. Have I been gotten them? No. And thou, thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nurse beareth the suckling child unto the land for which thou hast swears of thy father. Meaning I didn't give birth to them. I didn't make them with my wife. They aren't my spiritual son and daughter. Why am I in charge of these heathens? <laughs> what have to do with these complainers, God? Where should I have flesh to give unto all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, for it is too heavy for me. Therefore, if thou dealst thus with me, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, kill me, that I behold not my misery. Dang, they drove Moses to wanting to be suicided. Isn't that crazy? Oh, Y'all, it is amazing. It's not amazing like awesome, like awesomely God. It is amazingly sad how a group of mob mentality, because that's what's going on here, can greatly affect a person. And it's like a wolf, wolf pack, right? They see another wolf who's maybe injured, and I'm not speaking this over anyone, Lord, shield and cover us in the loving, saving blood of our Yeshua HaMashiach. But they see a wolf who is injured, and that wolf pack will go and attack the wolf. Or, you know what I mean? And that's exactly what's going here. They see millions of them, or hundreds of them, hundreds of thousands of them, because they're all men at this point, and they start attacking Moses. What made it in their mind think that, that that they could attack him? Probably because they outnumbered him. That was the only reason they thought about it. And at this time, Moses only showed these awesome wonders, like um, sending the plagues and, and all this stuff. This only happened to the Pharaoh, right? Which was a wicked person. So in these people's minds, the nation of Israel, these that are choosing to come against Moses, these are the people that would have been like, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. How dare you come against me? You see what I mean? Those self-righteous, prideful person, like the Pharisees or the, or the Sadducees or the scribes, like they came against Jesus, those individuals. That's the type of atmosphere that's going on now. 
So Moses is obviously greatly distressed because he has to walk among these people, live among these people. They're probably throwing food at him as he walks by their tents. Who knows how they're harassing them? You know how mob people can do. They can be very, very evil and devilish. It's very sad. Oh, Father, forgive us. Anyone else wondering why the nation of Israel was so bitter? They had meat from daily offerings and so on to eat. Maybe they didn't have certain fruits and vegetables, but surely God would have provided upon request. God, I would like an apple. God, I would like oranges. God, I would like whatever. Is there nothing that our God cannot do? Instead, this generation just wanted to be bitter, hateful, and in lacking. They wanted a slave mentality. I have would have been grieved with them too. Then on top of that, to read about the complaining began with the men of the household. I can understand why God was angry. The men were supposed to be the leaders of the houses, but instead the men were staying up all night, whining and complaining and planning hatefulness and wicked, wicked deeds against God's servants. Children of God, children of God, this is... And I want to say this only to point something out. Is it no wonder that the evil ones are trying to attack the men? They're trying to say masculinity is evil. They're trying to turn men into girls. They're trying to turn men into trans this and 50 genders that. They're trying to attack the men. Why? Because the heritage of our father goes through the men. Women, angry women, feminists, sit down, relax. You have your place. It's next to your man's side. Hallelujah. Helpmate. They try to attack the strongest ones. The one who God made in his image, which was a man. Women, we come from the rib of the man. Relax. So, there's a reason why... And where it starts men I'm not saying I have any authority over you and I'm not saying anything but the Word of God read the Word of God and see and speak to God and ask God what you're supposed to be doing in the body of Christ obviously anything that's against God we're not supposed to be doing but if God has called you to do something and to be a leader and to be a warrior of Christ, whatever the whatever it is, God is with you. Amen. And if you don't feel that you can do it on your own, well, we're going to have some Bible verses next that God will show us. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of ye elders of Israel, whom knowest what do they know? And thou art the elders of the people that governs over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of congregation. And let them stand there with thee. And I, meaning God himself, hallelujah, will come down and talk with thee there. And take of the spirit which is upon thee and put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. So thou shalt not bear it alone. Isn't that beautiful? Hallelujah. Praise God. If you don't know what's going on, because be, let's be honest, maybe you had an absentee father and no one taught you how to be a man. Or maybe you grew up with a workaholic mother and mama didn't tell you how to be a wife or a woman. Go to God and ask. Jesus is our teacher. He will teach you in spirit. Hallelujah. He will teach you in truth. He will teach you all righteousness and justness of the Lord. <sighs> I have so many testimonies on this topic, but not to drag on too long. I will say this. I am nowhere where I want to be in Christ. I, I want to be as close to Christ like with Christ is, is humanly possible, beyond humanly possible, to be quite honest. I pray for it all the time. But I can guarantee you this, I grew up and this is, has been, you know, my kind of my journey with the modesty thing and all this stuff. I was, I wasn't taught how to be a woman of God. 
And, and I'm not blaming anyone that I grew up with or who raised me. They did the best they can and I love them and I understand that, you know. But at some point, I had to be accountable to myself and my relationship with God. And I, I asked God, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, God. I don't know how to be a woman of God. I, I knew how to be a harlot. I knew how to be a whore, let's be honest. I knew how to be a drunkard. I knew how to be all these things, but none of them were of God. And you know what God said? Read my word. So I went and I read his word. I read about all the women in the Bible. There's even a book called All the Women of the Bible God led me to. And I read about all the women of the Bible, the good ones and the bad ones and the ups and the downs and their life stories based off biblical texts and historical documents. And through sitting down and having an active relationship with God and asking God, God, the source of all truth, for guidance and direction, God led me to now where I'm progressing in my relationship with him. Now, this is my relationship with him. I'm not going to tell any other woman or man what to do. But I will say this. If you were like me and you knew how to be a female or a male, but you don't know how to be a woman or a man of God, go to the Word of God and ask God to help you. And He will in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise Yahweh. I bet you someone's out there like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she said whore. <laughs> That's so funny. It's in the Bible. Relax. Everyone's good with God. Amen? Repent, go forth, and sin no more. All right. Verses 16 through 17, we read that, and you will not bear this alone. This is where, in my opinion, the failure began, where? With the elders of the tribe. And to be fair, elders were both women and men. The, there were women prophets, there were women healers and seers and all that. They would minister on to the women. And then there were the male ones who would minister on to the men. And then down to the tens. And then there were the elders or the Sanhedrins, what they call them later, right? And then there were the tribal leaders and then the princes of the tribes. They had a ruling class. The issue was the ruling class wasn't doing their job properly in the word of God. They are too busy whining and complaining in their tents. In Exodus chapter 3, the elders of the tribe had already been gathered and assigned tasks and to assist Moses in governing the tribes and members down to the ten persons. And in Exodus chapter 18, the elders had been gathered yet again to assist Moses and to help assist gathering the tribes. Then again, <laughs> so this is three times now, Numbers chapters 1 through 6, God himself, God himself, God himself orders the tribes to conduct a census or account of each member. Then each tribe is given their specific task. From the bottom up and from the top down, everyone was assigned. The problem was they wasn't doing their job. Amen. They're probably worrying about someone else's job. Run your race which the Lord our God has given you in Jesus name. Shepherds shouldn't be worried about what the task, not taskmasters, that's Egypt. Shepherds shouldn't have been worried about what the silk makers are doing. The silk makers had no busy going into what the herds and the goat shepherds are doing. You see what I mean? Run your race in the name of the Lord. So throughout God setting the nation Israel free, God has always expected his people to work and to be productive. I believe the issue arose when the leaders of the tribes, including the elders, failed to do their duties. Why? They probably got too comfortable. Um, just like King Solomon, right? He got too comfortable, got laxy daisy, and he started off well, but he didn't finish the race right. Y'all, every day, and I promise you, I always, always, always pray this. I say, God, you know I love you. I want to make it to heaven. I wanted to make it. Oh, I'm going to keep it together. I want to make it to heaven, God, because I want to be with you and my Jesus forever. And some might be like, Marie, you know, you teach the word of God. You, you don't try to sin. You do your best. 
and yes, but there are so many in the Bible who start off well with God, but they don't finish well with God. And I pray all the time, God, help me to finish well with you. Help me to be a good and faithful servant because you're the only one who can help me do right by you. And obviously, I'm not just going to say, help me, God, and sit back and relax. No, I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to be purposeful. I'm going to repent, fast, and pray. I'm going to study. I'm going to volunteer. I'm going to go to church. No, we're not saved by works alone, but I can guarantee you this. An active life in Christ is a good and faithful servant. A wicked servant just buries those talents into the ground and decides to say, well, I've been baptized. I'm good enough. I'm saved. Now I'm not going to go try to win any souls to Christ because it's embarrassing. I'm just going to sit here and be grateful that I'm saved enough. I believe that's a wicked servant, but always confirm with God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what do you see on the screen before you are the links to those Bible studies which we reviewed and we went over were God had called each time 70 elders to assist Moses and obviously they didn't want to do their job. All right, so the aw, I like the little memes. Those are fun. It's nice learning to make new ones. Let me drink some water real fast. Excuse me. so good i love water amen in jesus name all right numbers chapter 18 through numbers 11 chapter numbers chapter 11 verses 18 through 23 furthermore thou shalt say unto the people be satisfied against tomorrow and ye shall eat flesh Ooh, y'all when i reread this part i was like oh lord you done did it lord <laughs> ye shall eat flesh for you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? If you were better in Egypt, therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. You shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days. By the way, all those numbers mean something, right? Two is pairing, five is grace, ten is... Oh, Ten, nine is judgment, ten is completion, and twenty is the double of the judgment completion. Oh man, I just realized that, y'all, they're going to get it. But a whole month, meaning 30 days, which 30 or 31, right? That would have been the age that the Levites would have been inducted if they had proved spiritually qualified to be able to be a priest in the tabernacle. So all these numbers have a meaning because God is beautiful and glorious and he gives us signs and wonders and I'm not talking numerology. But for a whole month, until it come out of your nostrils, and be loathsome to you because you have condemned the Lord, meaning the spirit, your ruler, your king, your Yeshua HaMashiach, your Lord, your Christ, which is among you. And I have wept and you have wept before him saying, why can we, why came we here out of Egypt? And Moses said, 600,000 footmen are there of the people among them. Who am I? And thou sayest, I will give them flesh. And that they may eat a month long. Shall the sheep and the, the beast be slain for them to find them? Either shall all the fish of the sea come gather together from them to be sacrificed to them? And the Lord said unto Moses, God is so funny, y'all. God got a sense of humor. I love him so much. Praise God. The Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand shortened? <laughs> Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or no. I love God. And it's, it's funny here how Moses kind of questions God. Like, God, how are you going to give them so much that it's going to come out of their nostrils? Are you going to do this through sacrifice? You know, how is this going to be done? I don't think Moses was questioning God's ability to do it. I think Moses was questioning 
in order to understand how it's going to be done. And in my opinion, because this is what I receive out of the text, others might receive it more harshly. Um, I receive it as God's humor, like, is my hand too short? You know, like, is is there, like, kind of like in the other Bible verses, like in, a, I think it's Jeremiah, where God says, is there some other God who I haven't heard of? You see what I mean? So I love God's sense of humor. I think he's just amazing, but that's, I don't know, that's just what I've received. Some might receive it different. I think it's okay to ask God for clarification to in order to, to ensure that we conduct his requests um, in, the, in the manner that he wants us to. Like if God says, go pick up that rock over there and there's a ton of rocks and you're like, okay, God, well, which rock would you like me to pick? And he's like the brown one. Okay, if there's three brown ones, but one's dark, one's light brown, and one's medium brown, would you say, okay, which one, God, the dark, the light, or the medium? You see what I mean? I believe that's okay. Questioning God is a, how do you say it? Questioning God as if he doesn't know what he's doing or questioning God like you're challenging him, that's obviously not okay. But I do believe God knows our heart and why and how we're asking what we're asking. Does that make sense? All right. Ooh, you know what? I just noticed that. So the men that were complaining were 600,000 footmen. So that was the army. That wasn't all the men in the camp. That was just the army. Oh, that's funny. Hmm. I just noticed that. I was like, why didn't that just click earlier? All right, so verse 11, so chapter 11, verse 24. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered 70 men of the elders unto the people and set them around the tabernacle. So we need to look at ancient men because we're going to go into this. And remember, there's a lot of couple terms in the Bible where they say men of old, men of renown, or ancient times. So I like to look up the possible meanings for each one. So this is just me and I wanted to share that with others. In the Hebrew, ancient men means old age men, yes, a waxed old man, yeah. An ancient man, an elder, or right here, 2205, men and women, a senator. So when other individuals are like, oops, sorry, when individuals are like, Marie, you're just an angry feminist, which I'm not, you're always trying to put it that women were teaching in biblical times in the Old Testament. You're always trying to say that women were priests in the Old Testament. Well, I've shown time and time again, they could be like the Nazarites, right? In Numbers chapter 6, which is the holy voluntary priesthood unto God. It could be man or woman. But now we hear see it again in the hebrew which is the old testament right ancient older men and women that were in position or power of authority that were a senator so they were in government or the ruling class or the elders over a tribe now i know some don't want to believe women were priests in biblical times but the bible says different if there is someone who was bothered by that i would go to god and question why that is is it because you're incorrectly taught it's because you have pride in what you feel you know or is there some honestly honestly speaking let's let's be honest is there some wound there is there some hurting there is there perhaps I don't know some healing that needs to take place I would just I would just take it there because oftentimes when people are angered and want to exclude a gender or a type or a race from the body of Christ somewhere it's it's normally due to some ignorance some miseducation or it's due to a hurt and a wound Sometimes it's due to an evil spirit, but I don't feel that's the case in most most cases. It's normally hurt or pain somewhere and miseducation. But we have it right here. So Miss Marie always does her research. So we're going to look it up in the Greek just to be sure, right? All right. So if we are looking up ancient, now it means in the Greek, in the boiled, boiled, right? 
Candid, Favorite, Hot, Liquids to Glow Solids. So we can kind of guess that the ancient we're going to read about in the next verse, ancient men, doesn't mean hot, boiling men. Could it mean men who are zealous and hot for God, as in right here, 2205? I believe that could be the, the case. Like, um, but this is this would be for the New Testament, right? Because it would be in the Greek. So if we read ancient in the New Testament times, they said someone was ancient man of God, meaning that they were zealous for God. They were uh, like a brand new Christian with the fire of the Lord. Like you read about Paul, you know, he went straight into the synagogue and started teaching. He got kicked out and they wanted to stone him, right? He was hot for Jesus once he got taught by the Lord. That's amazing. So we see, <coughs> excuse me, let me drink some water. Two definitions and they're both biblical and strong in the Lord. All right, let's read these verses. We're almost done. Give me about 10, 20 more minutes and we'll be done. All right, verse 25 through 30. Then the Lord came down in a cloud. Oh, that must have been so beautiful. And spoke unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him, meaning Moses, and put it upon 70 ancient men. So do you see why I, I wanted to look up the definition? So it means that God put the spirit of Moses on 70 leaders, men and women of the tribe. And we've went over this before, but why does it say him or men? Because when God looks at a ruler, he doesn't, he isn't looking at their gender. He isn't looking at their race. He's looking at them onto like the angels, because that's how we're going to be in heaven. We're not going to be husbands and wives marrying and having children. We're going to be spirit. Does that make sense? And God's spirit is man or male. But you know what I mean. All right. Yes. And when the spirit rested upon him, then they prophesied. Amen. And did not cease. But there remained two men in the host, meaning spirit, and that were prophesying, right? So can God will or give anyone a prophecy? Absolutely. Does it make them a prophet? No. God appoints prophets and the host, the spirit of God, remains on his prophets their entire life that they're right with God. Amen? All right. So someone can prophesy. It might be a one-time thing. It doesn't make them a prophet. But those who are God's prophets, God has the spirit in them. Be kind to God's prophets, y'all. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets and no harm. And the name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Midad. The Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them were written and went not out to the tabernacle. So the 70 elders, men and women, leaders of the tribe, were required to go to the tabernacle and be present because the Lord was going to come down and talk to them. But instead, these two stayed where they were at in the tents of the community and continued to prophesy by the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God rested in them. Amen? So when God put His Spirit into them and the other ones, the Spirit left them, right? They went to the tabernacle, but God's Spirit rested on them and they stayed where they were at. They were staying in their assignment now appointed to them by almighty god this is how you know god selected these two individuals eldad and medad to now be prophets among the tribe because when god gives a prophet an assignment or appointment and anointment they aren't going to do what the rest of the golf papa or general population of the tribe ecclesia congregation are doing they're a little bit out there they stand out it doesn't matter where they go the presence of god our father is upon them and christians can't help but be attracted to them they don't know why and i'm not talking lusting attracting to them they are inquisitive about them they want to know where they come from, what they're doing, why they look like they do, why they talk like they talk, why they have a passion and hot for the Lord. They want to know. They kind of envy them. Now, it could turn into a bad negative thing if some 
one has a negative spirit upon them or they're giving into some kind of evil or lusting things oh yeah it could get negative but it's god's presence upon them so prophets in the lord if you just came up and you just been appointed a prophet and all of a sudden people are, are wanting your attention or coming around you this is take take this advice but always confirm with god it's not you they're after it's god all right so you might be the best looking of the best looking that ever best looked but trust me they're coming after god so send them to jesus amen don't allow yourself to be tempted or give in to any cravings all right in jesus name and don't allow yourself to get ego and inflated it's very sad when i see that happen to people i'm like oh you were doing so good why did that happen um stay humble and stay right with god in jesus name amen all right and joshua son of nun the servant of moses one of the young men among said my lord moses forbid them moses said unto him envious thou for my sake ye would god ye would god that all lord's people were prophets and the lord would put his spirit upon them and moses returned into the host meaning into the spirit of god and the elders of israel so joshua comes to moses and says look they're prophesying now the next question should be why was joshua offended by this why did he go to moses and be like rebuke them stop them from prophesying you know could it be what they were saying offended joshua possibly we're going to go over that in the spiritual teaching or was joshua offended that there was another prophet among the tribe i see this happen a lot especially on the platforms sometimes both prophets let's say there could be 20 prophets in a room and somehow 17 of them will give in to pride vanity how they're the best prophet that ever profited of the prophet of gods every pro you know what i mean and it turns into a christian west coast east coast rap battle or whatever don't be that way i can't stand it i find it annoying I take a book. This is what I do to annoy, uh, avoid people. I take a book with me everywhere I go. One, I love to read. Two, I love reading about God and classics. I take a book with me. So that way when people start talking about things that I don't need to hear, they start gossiping, They whatever, things that are not interesting because unless it's about Jesus, I'm not interested. Um, I just open my book and I start reading. Marie, that's rude. Oh, well. It's rude for them to speak filth around a child of the living God. How about that? I don't care if I'm in a line, in a plane, on a train, with green eggs and ham, some I am. I will sit there and I will read wherever I am. Now, if someone comes up to talk to me, yes, I'll talk to them. I'm not rude. Um, but unless someone comes to talk to me, I'm not talking to them because I'm in my book. Because I want to be centered on the Word of God. Does that make sense? So I just want to provide... Whew, that example for others if you can't help but be around people that probably aren't up in Jesus you know and in, in, in the hosts and, and being right with God just take a book with you wherever you go it in it's better than just staring at your phone the whole time because you know you know what I mean in Jesus name amen all right numbers chapter 11 verse 31 through 34 then that there went forth a wind hallelujah praise god you know what that reminds me of excuse me when um elijah yeah elisha right when he went up to the cave and there was thunder there was lightning there was earthquake and god wasn't in them but god was in the wind a still small voice isn't that beautiful oh praise god anyhow there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them all fall upon the camp. A day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side. 
and roundabout of the host, meaning spiritually, supernaturally, this happened. And they were about two cubics above the earth. In the heavenlies, where the spiritual realm is. Then the people arose all that day and all that night and all that next day and gathered the quell, quells. He that gathered the least gathered ten homers, and we went over the definition of homers, full, that he, uh, this is so gross, I'm going to try not to throw up, uh, it's so gross. They spread them abroad their use around about the host, while the flesh was yet between their teeth, <laughs> yet it was chewed, and even the wrath of God was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with an exceedingly great plague. So the name of the place was called, I'm, I might not say this correctly, it's pretty much guaranteed, Kimbos Hatar Hath. For there they buried the people that fell into lusting or craving, and the Torah reads this verse as, He named the place Kiroth Hatavaas, grave of, Graves of Craving, for there they buried the people who craved or lusted. Now, what I read from this verse is, they literally went out as the quells were landing upon the ground, gathered the quells up, and started instantly biting into the newly flesh meat. Normally, you hear about them doing an offering, which they should have done an offering to God to celebrate him giving a meat and saying, thank you, children of God, if God blesses you, say thank you to God. Amen. Reminder, 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 right? But two... Um, you don't hear about a fire. You don't hear about how they prepared it. God in his word said how they're supposed to eat birds, right? It was like a quick slit, not decapitating the throat of the bird. You let the blood drain out onto the ground um, in a certain area of the tabernacle or uh, the grounds where you cook. And then you defeather it. You take out all the innards and all that stuff. And you, they had to put it in salt. And that would help purify the meat and take out all the toxins. Then they would let it sit for a while. And then they would wash it and clean it and, you know, boil it, fry it, saute it, whatever they did. But you don't read that. It says, the people arose all that day and all that night and the next day and gathered the quells. And he gathered the gathered the least ten homers full. And they spread them a bolt, their use around their hosts. Meaning they like bathed in it. Ew, they ate the host of the bird, like bird sushi, which is, ew, <laughs> that's so gross. It was probably still flapping its wings as they're biting into it. And the flesh of the bird was in their teeth as they chewed. I believe this is why God's anger was kindled. Like, you nasty savages, didn't I tell you to eat a bird? Like, they gave in to being animalistic at this point, which God doesn't want his children to be. That's a curse, right? In Jesus name now I wonder what the plague was that God sent among the people so I found a pretty awesome what I think awesome I'm sure there's other articles out there that describe how one could get sick from quell meat and yes the link is in the blog for those who would like to read uh, the rest of the the blog or internet page themselves can you get sick from eating quell yes you can get sick from eating quell that feed upon the toxic plants. Although rich in nutrients, consumption of quail meat can and may lead to contourism. What's contourism? This is an illness that is characterized by muscle tenderness and rhombosis. This is the breakdown and damage of skeletal muscles with symptoms of weakness, vomiting, and irregular heartbeat. That's crazy, right? And then on top of that, they're eating so much it's coming out of their nostrils because that's what God said would happen. And you know that's what happened. Ugh, no thank you. Adverse effects to eating quail meat. Consuming the meat of a quail feeds upon the poisonous food can lead to adverse effects. One in four person who consumes poisonous meat is affected by contrusions. What is that name? Corn turns is. I don't know. 
is characterized by muscle soreness and also can lead to adverse kidney failure. Moreover, if you are consuming quail meat in higher amounts, you may experience kidney problems, dermatomyositis, itis, I know that's inflammation, skin inflammation, Alzheimer's, increased ovromocide proteins, metabolic problems, low blood pressure, and increased cholesterol levels. Ooh, that's nasty. But do y'all hear this? So, remember how before I said do not come into agreement with um, heritage, what is it? Heritage, sickness, heritage, illnesses. When you go to the doctor, they want you to fill out some forms asking what runs in your family. Did you read this right here? God sent a supernatural plague upon these people because they were just being whiners and complainers, giving in to the murmuring spirit, right? They didn't even wait for the quail to be cooked. They just started biting into it, and then a plague came amongst them. Every, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm not, I'm just a child of God, and I read the word of God, and God talks to me, and I talk to you all, and then we all just be talking about Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit. Every sickness, illness, and disease is from evil spirits. It's from transgressing against God. And this is why I try to advise the children of God. You can do what you want, but based off the word of God, when you go to a doctor and they say or ask, does X, Y, and Z run in your family? It may have happened to your mama. It may have happened to your daddy, your cousin, your sister, or aunt, your grandpa, grandpa, whoever. But let me tell you this, child of God, it will not happen to you in the name of the Lord. Amen? Who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why? Because you are a new creation. You are a new flesh. You are fearfully, wonderfully made. You have great thoughts from our Father towards you, which He loves you and He wants to prosper you. He has deemed you worthy and has made you whole mind, body, spirit, and soul. Amen? Do not come in agreement with anything negative. Do not. Because that isn't from God. Sickness, illness, and disease is from sinful living and if you aren't living sinfully you have repented of your sins you have been found righteous before the lord all of those have been forgiven of you amen always confirm with god if you have repented and fasted and prayed go with god amen don't go with the world in jesus name from oh chapter 11 verse 35 last biblical verse from Kimbu's Hatavas, sorry, ye people, t ye people took their journey to Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. Ooh, y'all. Yay, spiritual teaching Torah time. I love learning the Torah and studying the Torah. Some, this week especially, has been so busy. I can't even tell you how... I love studying God's word. And this is another reason why I always carry books with me. Because I'd rather be, <coughs> excuse me, if I am studying, if I'm standing in line, instead of whipping out my phone and mindlessly scrolling, I love reading the word of God. So I always suggest this to others. Amen. Plus it does help when you don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> in Jesus name. All right. So the next portion I'm going to go over the Torah teaching It'll probably only be like five or ten more minutes. Uh, I only have like one, two, one, two, ooh, all right, it might be 20 more minutes. <laughs> all right, uh, to avoid redundancy, I'm only going to go over the Bible verses that the Lord our God led us to. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father God, in the blessed name of our Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for this day. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your education, your correction, and your guidance, Lord. You are our everything, and we praise you now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Verses 1 through 3 of Numbers chapter 11. 
While the nation of Israel were at Mount Sinai, they were not necessarily alone in the mountain area. There, it was a populated area. Many tribes lived around them. They were not so far from civilization. But the nation of Israel prepared to travel into the wilderness and into a new reality mindset. The tribes of vastness or the vast possibilities were greatly unknown in this new wilderness God was leading them into. Perhaps, and I'm just suggesting perhaps, part of the reason that the nation of Israel began to grumble or complain was out of fear. Fear or traumatic events that possibly happen as our testing or growing periods, if we allowed them to fester, could give way to openings for evil spirits to start attacking us and then becoming strongholds. The point is, don't stay in fear, but overcome and conquer that fear in Jesus' name. For the next season of life, or in a fearful season, a new unknown, maybe the nation of Israel was facing this fear challenge. Instead of combating this fear or going to God to give them strength and courage, they decided to give in to the murmuring spirit. Let's review our notes from Exodus chapter 3, and we might hear some of the similar fears from their own prophet Moses. We'll be able to compare what happens in the case of victory with his prophet Moses who overcame fear and those of this tribe of the nation of Israel who chose to give in to fear and thus received plagues and wraths and trials and judgments of God. Exodus chapter 3 notes. God at Mount Herub or Mount Sinai. This is where God will be giving the nation of Israel through his prophet Moses the Ten Commandments. Mount Herub is an AM or light or positive side of the obedient side of God. Mount Sinai is the PM or the dark side, the judgment or side turning away from God. Mount Sinai. God showed mercy, but the people wanted law. So with their statement, everything you have said unto us, we will do, it removed them from being under God's grace and put them, putting them, it removed them from being under God's grace of the Passover lamb and put them under the law of God. Would they truly succeed in staying right with God based on the law? The answer is no, right? <laughs> Moses echoes the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6 when God calls him. Prophet Jeremiah said to God, but I am just a child. Why are you calling me? Call someone who's more wisdom filled or older essentially. When God called Moses, Moses said, why are you calling me? I stutter, I stumble, I am just a babe as well. But God said to Jeremiah and Moses, hey, I'm going to give you a helper. And they had a helper their entire ministry. Isn't that beautiful? In Exodus chapter 3, about the verse 14, I am that I am, God says, tell them when you go speak to them that I am that I am has sent you. And then Jesus says this in John chapter 8, verse 48 through 59. Before Abraham was... I am. Praise God. Exodus chapter 3 about verse 22. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children. A wealth of a sinner is laid up for the just. What does that mean? We can either transfer on to our children a heritage in and of Christ. We can either transfer to our children and our descendants courage, faith, a strong mind built on the rock of God, or we can leave an inheritance of sickness, illness, and disease that is passed down through wickedness and sin. For the iniquities of the father is visited unto the next generations, down to the third and fourth generations, until 
one of those generations decides to get right with God. Moses was a good shepherd. David was a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. Abel was a shepherd. Most of the problems parchments were shepherds. It doesn't matter where we start out or where God find us. God will meet us at our perfect, most weakest point. And then he will use that to shape and mold us into what we can do for him, for his glory and his victory. God appeared to Moses gradually, first as fire, then as an angel, then to God, as God himself. Elohim is introduced here because God was about to bring judgment to Egypt for many years of extreme cruelty towards the Hebrew nation. Many turn away from God, but those who were open to God received what? Freedom from being persecuted in Egypt. Elohim denotes or connotes strict justice. Hashem, which is who we are reading about now in the Torah section, right? Hashem, connotes means mercy of Yah, which shows Yahweh's intention to save the nation of Israel through divine mercy. The bush being not consumed by fire will show that God had no intention of destroying the nation of Israel, but saving them. Moses saying, here I am, as Moses stated, I am willing, I am present, I am able to do God's will. Here we clearly hear the two differences. Moses was initially afraid to serve God. He was afraid of this unknown. Yet he finished with, I am. I am here. I am willing. I am able. I am present. But this nation of Israel at this time in the book of Noses, <laughs> Numbers escalated in their attack towards God and his anointed. They continued to murmur and complain. And now they are giving in to yet again into evil murmuring spirits. We hear one of a victor and who overcame their past. And then we hear ones of who chose to remain in a slave mentality. Choose this day whom you will serve. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord in Jesus name. There are five names for Mount Sinai. Cyanide was derived from the moon god, god with a little g, Sin. This moon god was about the desert areas trying to attack the nation of Israel. Some people might be wondering, well, where did this murmuring spirit come from? I'm glad you asked. As we just reviewed, Mount Sinai was in still a heavily populated area. The nation of Israel wasn't totally removed, as most of us have been incorrectly taught, wasn't totally removed from possibly having contact with outside sources. Mount Sinai being named after a moon god with a little g shows how the vast or a vast evil spirits were roaming upon the desert wasteland, which is confirmed with what our Jesus teaches in the New Testament. They were looking for a home or for a house that was unclean so they can go fill it. Unfortunately, they happened to find it in certain members of the nation of Israel. Thus, they giving in to those murmuring spirits. What is a murmuring spirit like? Some might be asking. Has anyone been sitting down and you're like, oh man, God wants me to apply for this job. And then all of a sudden you might start getting negative thoughts like, oh, you won't get it. Oh, you don't have anything to wear that's proper to the interview or whatever. Just like negative thoughts. That's a murmuring spirit. Rebuke it in Yeshua's great name. If God told you to go do something, if God told you to go to a grocery store, whatever it is, God is with you. You have the victory. You just need to do your part in getting there. In Jesus' name. 
I believe this is this was the evil spirits that were roaming across the desert land. Were wandering the desert are what got to many in the nation of Israel, the murmuring spirit. It is evil, rebuked in Yeshua's great name. Mount Sinai is also called the mountain of Pur excellence, mountain of Elohim, mountain of Yahweh, and mountain of Habab. The edge of the camp in verse 1 being consumed. Those who were consumed were the new converts from the nation of Israel. They would have been the ones from Egypt or travelers or passers by. Those who witnessed the 10 plagues that happened in Egypt and chose to convert and promise to adapt to the nation of Israel's rules and serve God Almighty. But as we remember, Moses had been far less experienced in being a prophet of God at this point in time during Exodus. He neglected to ask Hashem if he had the blessing to accept these new Egypt converts. If the Egypt converts were true converts or were their heart simply refusing to remain in Egypt and receive the justice and judgment that they most likely deserved. What was their true intentions? Were they fake refugees? Were they fake missionaries? Were they fake converts? Was this infiltration from within? Others consumed by the wrath of God were the elders or leaders that had failed to do their jobs as leaders of the nation of Israel. This is why 70 elders were called meaning This is why 70 elders were called meaning that the incompetent elders had been consumed by the almighty fire of God and more zealous, more hot for Jesus, more hot for the Lord remained and this were appointed and promoted to the new 70 found or selected elders by Moses and God. Verse 3, Tamura. This location was three days journey from Mount Sinai. The burning or the fire of Hafsam Name for the location was due to those who had lived and witnessed and for the first burning were then consumed at Tabara due to continuing to complain and murmur. So there was actually two locations and locations of God sending his holy spiritual fire to consume the wicked. So who witnessed these miracles? The judgment and wrath of God will still be sent will still be set on their evil ways, but some won't. Some would see these miracles and wonders taking place, and some would change temporary, some would change semi-permanent, and some would change permanently. Kind of like the seeds that are cast onto a road cast onto hard soil and choked by weeds or cast into good soil and the roots grow deep parables of jesus verses 4 through 10 of numbers chapter 11 dissatisfaction with manna bread of the angels the mixed multitude false converts invaders fake refugees showed their true intentions infiltration for within their true intentions to pollute and destroy the nation of Israel. This war infiltration from within, from within shown how the complaints among complaints about manna were not truly the goal. Verse five, free of charge. In Egypt, the taskmasters would provide enslaved nation of Israel with the food already prepared or their daily allowances farmed, much like a delivery service or welfare program or EBT card. The nation of Israel, while they were enslaved, even had their straw provided for them they really only had to do the construction or masonry part. 
they had a welfare or government rashes sort of way and they wanted their easier life back. Verse 16, the new elders appointed were former Jewish taskmasters of the Egyptian area. The Jewish taskmasters or foremen allowed themselves to be beaten instead of their fellow Jewish brothers who were slaves. Verse 28, and this will be the last note for our spiritual teaching of the Bluestone Torah. Why was Joseph upset? <laughs> Eldad and Midad. What is the definition of their names? I'm glad you asked. Eldad and Midad. Eldad. Oh my gosh, I thought I had this for you all. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Let me look it up again. Eldad and Midad. Eldad. Here we go. Eldad means God has loved. One of the 70 elders selected by Moses gathered around the tabernacle to receive the gift of prophecy. Nidad has the spiritual meaning of, here we go. Here we go. Nidad means affection. One of the 70 elders appointed to assist Moses in the government of the people. So God has loved and God loves with a perfection were the two names of the new prophets that God's spirit continued to abide in during this time of the book of Numbers. Isn't that beautiful? I loved that part. The two new prophets prophesied the death of Moses and the appointment of Joshua. This is why Joshua wanted Moses to forbade the two new prophets, Eldar and Midar, from prophesying. He felt it was disrespectful to openly prophesy a prophet's death. In Jesus mighty name amen well children of god i pray others truly got something out of this bible study i pray this bible study bless others in jesus name i told you it's going to be a little bit longer than usual but i pray that others see how it was worth it there was like a lot of meat and potatoes in this bible study but it was something that needed to be spoken of and helped for several different reasons. One, we needed to correct a lot of misteachings, right? I found that when I first came to God, I had to confess to our Father who was in heaven that I didn't know anything. It was a very humbling and painful and angry season i was mad that i had been lied to and i was disappointed in myself for somehow allowing myself not that i could have controlled it because i was very young right being so foolish to believe all these lies when all these lies could have easily been corrected if i had just been right with god and read my bible i would have known better and i was so disappointed so this is part of the reason why I do my best to research sources, to share them with others, to help the body of Christ understand and learn. And I try to not be prideful. I try to leave room for me to say, hey, this is what I found, but I could be wrong. The Pharisees thought they were right, but they were wrong, right? You see what I mean? So we can all do our part and do our best to try to be right with God. The point is, focus our life on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Look for good sources. Look for correct information. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord, our Savior, Emmanuel, for God is forever and always with us. 
We thank you for this Bible study, Lord. We thank you for blessing us and watching over us. We thank you for your protection, your grace, your love, your kindness, your mercy, your shelter, your grace. We thank you for helping us relearn and be educated correctly according to you. We thank you for sending your beautiful Holy Spirit to give us discernment, to give us uh, ed proper, correct education, to show us the historical side of your text, the biblical side of your text, and the spiritual side of your word, Lord. We thank you for allowing us, God, how merciful, allowing us to have a relationship with you through our Jesus, the Savior of the world, hallelujah, the unblemished lamb. Oh, the true love of our life, God. Thank you for giving us our Jesus. Thank you for making it so that we can all be washed clean and forgiven and made anew. Thank you for our merciful Lord, who is so kind and so good, yet so assertive and so strong and so courageous unto death. Thank you, Jesus, for being so willing to die for those who didn't and wouldn't recognize you, who didn't and wouldn't acknowledge you, who still to this day turn away from you, even though you are doing your best to reach out to everyone. Thank you so much for loving us and giving up yourself so that the most wicked among us might be saved. You are so great and so wonderful and so glorious, and we just give you all the honor and all the glory, God. Thank you. Thank you for being our creator. As always, we pray for our President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, and all the patriots worldwide, those who are all in the body of Christ. We pray for the other prophets, the other seers, the other saints, the remnant army, the praise groups, and the praise warriors. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, let where you are be a ministry leading souls to Christ. We pray that God continue to anoint you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. May your mind, spirit, body, and soul be forever washed in the blood of our blessed Lamb. We pray this all in the mighty name of our Jesus Christ of Nazareth, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruha Kaddish, and sealed with the blood of Christ. Yes and amen. Amen. Praise God. Right, children of the most high ever loving living God. Um, blog for chapter 12 is already out. I haven't shared it out. I've prepared the podcast because I want to go over it and try to correct mistakes. Like there were so many in this one I need to correct. <laughs> but anyhow, we will be together again next Sabbath. So happy Hanukkah, Shabbat Shalom, and till next time. Till next time, may God keep you, may God bless you. May we all be forever written in the book of life. Amen.
Father. The hour has come.